Dear Sammy, it was not easy for me to find fitting words for these first lines that I hope you are reading, as well as it was not easy to find out where you were living. I hope that my letter will reach your hands as soon as possible, as there is not much time left. Since your departure, I have contributed all my efforts and endless hours of sleepless nights looking for the truth about our family. I feel that I am already very close to beholding its full face, and I am concerned that I might not have the strength to look at it alone. Therefore, I am turning to you, Samuel, for I know that you will hear out my plea. In this envelope, you will find the ancient ring of our heritage. It is very important that you always have it with you. Take extraordinary care of it. Please return to our manor and help me. I know my time is closing in. I can feel it. I am afraid. After the funeral, we jointly returned to Black Mirror. The journey through the desolate countryside seemed endless. No one spoke a single word. When our glances met, they were full of deep sorrow. It wasn't merely grief, however, that was in our eyes. It was also a certain alienation that Victoria and Robert felt towards me. My unexpected return after more than 12 years gave them the freedom to ask all kinds of unspoken questions. I am truly sorry about what happened. Thank you, Heinz. I don't know what else I should say. William was everything to me, and now... You need not say anything, Victoria. Today is a sad day for all of us. I think I will leave you alone now, if you will excuse me. You don't have to go. You are a good friend to us, as you were to William. I value your words, but I think I had better go now. Please be our guest, I beg you. I would be happy to, if that is your wish. I would like to skim through certain volumes in your library, if you would not mind then. No, not at all. Thank you. I will be in the library. Bates, should Heinz need anything, please be of help to him. Of course. You can rely on that, madam. Do not want to sound harsh, but I think we should leave you alone. You are empathic as usual, Robert. I want to be alone with my thoughts for a while. That is quite understandable. Samuel. Would you see me to my study? Yes, gladly. Oh, Samuel, please stay. I'd like a word with you. Certainly. Will you excuse me, Robert? We will talk later. I will be in my study. Samuel, tell me, have you returned to stay with us for good? To tell the truth, I haven't decided yet. Give me some more time, please. Don't forget, we are still your family. You are a Gordon, and you belong here just like all the other Gordons before you. Yes, I am well aware of that, but I need to put my thoughts in order. Perhaps then I'll be able to answer your question. 
Oh well. I hoped you'd say yes. I'm not feeling well. Please excuse me now, Samuel. Of course. I will go to my room. Sir, I took the liberty to clean up your room. I believe you will be satisfied with the results. Here is the key. Your suitcase is already in the room. Thank you, Bates. Victoria wants me to stay. Maybe I should have promised I would, but I haven't made up my mind yet. Maybe later. Bates has readied my room. I should go have a look. This place hasn't changed at all, as though I were only away for a few days. Welcome home, Samuel. I only have a few necessities in it. I'll take the pills in case my head starts to ache again. I'll surely need the wallet. It's cold in here. I'll tell Bates to light up the fireplace. Catherine would comb her beautiful hair in front of it every morning. It's best not remembered. A collection of old pictures. I don't want to remember that time. I'll leave it alone. Forgive me, Catherine. locked. I only had a couple of things and an old camera in it as far as I recall. But where did I keep the key? I'll have a look around the room. It has to be here somewhere. I cannot see there. It's too high. I'll try reaching up there. There is something there. The key to my drawer. I knew it had to be somewhere in the room. I don't want to rest now. I used to play chess here with William. I remember him teaching me my first moves as if it were today. Robert presented this one to William. Jennifer, the wife of Tobias Gordon. Today's paper. I'll have a look. Hmm. There seems to be a note of some sort inside. Robert. I have only now received have your only letter. now received your letter. That permanently drunken goof whom you have paid to be the messenger brought it late. I will take care of your parcel as usual. Do not worry. Fortunately, no one cares about anything in this godforsaken place. P.S. I suggest you give more money to that blockhead Mark next time. 
Maybe it will help him be more tardy. I'll put it back so that Robert finds it where it's supposed to be. Robert, may I speak with you for a moment? Of course. I'd be happy to speak to you. We haven't seen each other for such a long time. How many years has it been? Twelve, maybe more. A long time indeed. I am happy that you have returned. I have not come to stay. I came only to be here for William's funeral. Really? That's a pity. I thought you would stay with us for a few months at least. Maybe you can still change your mind. So, what do you want to talk about? What do you think about what happened to William? That is a strange question. What should I think about it? I don't believe it was an accident, let alone suicide. I am afraid you are jumping to conclusions, Samuel. You don't happen to think it was a murder, do you? No. But really, who would want to kill themselves in the autumn of their life? William was a very old man. Look, William was alone in the tower when it happened, and the door was locked from the inside. So a stranger's intervention is impossible. So why didn't he leave a letter? That I do not know, and I do not even want to think about it. I'm trying hard to get my thoughts away from William's death, and I absolutely don't feel like talking about it. How is it possible that Robert is not at all interested in this? Am I the only one who wants to know the truth of what happened to William? The castle is falling into disrepair. How long can it last like this? It has been standing here for hundreds of years, and it is not going to decay any time soon. It will outlive us, just as it has outlived our ancestors. But the old wing is on the verge of falling down. It was already on the verge of falling apart when I was born. Yet, it still stands. Why hasn't anyone tried to restore it? Oh, sure they have. About a hundred years ago, Werner Gordon attempted to repair it. Why are you saying attempted? Well, he was not the first one who had tried it. The new structure never lasted more than a couple of years. The original castle foundations that Marcus and Mordred jointly laid are within those walls. It's as though the old stones do not want to accept the new ones. Strange, indeed. So what has been happening around here since I've been away? Hmm. Things are rather odd, but I have no recollection of anything special. Are there any new families? No, I do not believe so. In fact, the only person to have moved here is Dr. Herman. We also have a different groom and a different gardener than the ones you knew. I've been away for twelve years, and all that has happened is that we have two new servants. Well, no one is clamoring to live around here, you know that yourself. Yes, nothing really has changed. It's almost scary. I must go now. Right then. I'll return to my work. I'm glad you have returned, sir. We have kept your room intact. It's exactly as it was when you left. Very nice. Thank you. If you would like to have it straightened or anything else, just tell me. That won't be necessary. It happened so suddenly, I didn't have time to write that I was coming. I would be happy to help you with anything. Thank you. I'll be fine. Do you need anything else, sir? I have spoken to Robert. It seems to me he may not be feeling well. It is probably due to his responsibilities at Ashbury. Lately it seems to really exhaust him. He has recently taken to spending most of his time at work, 
often not even returning home for the night. He usually arrives in the evening, locks himself in his study, and works late into the night. He won't even let me in. He may just not want to be disturbed. Maybe, but he would never do that before. Hmm. I'll talk to him. All right, sir. I was under the impression that nothing had changed here since I left. So many years have passed, but it seems to me like it was just last month. The same scenery, the same weather, as though time would rather avoid this place. Sir, a lot has changed in your absence. Nothing is as it was, believe me. We are all growing old, and so is everything around us. I've been a servant here since my youth, and I know well how much a man can be changed by this place. During the last few months, things have been getting noticeably worse, day by day. It is as if the bleakness within the old walls of this manor is gradually taking us over. Hmm? Maybe you're right. And I don't feel exactly well within these walls. And recalling memories of me that I've wanted to forget. Range and dark in them. And that dismal silence. Bates, could you please light up the fireplace in my room? It's quite cold in there. Oh, pardon this old servant, sir. I had completely forgotten about it. I will be happy to light up your fireplace. Also, if you need the room cleaned up properly, please say so. It was abandoned for over 12 years, and one hasty cleanup is insufficient. No, the room is all right. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Are you sure you're all right, Bates? You know, you can take a rest whenever you want. Thank you, sir. I think I will be fine. Bates, tell me, is the old part of the castle still safe? I would like to examine the ruins. I used to play there as a boy. But, sir, it was not safe, even back then. Yes, you're right. Victoria would always scold me when she saw me there. She would really read the riot act to me. And she was quite justified in that. Those old walls are only staying up thanks to their own weight. It certainly is not a good idea to go there, even for a few moments, sir. Please do not take that kind of risk. Calm down, Bates. I was just being curious. I do not intend to go there. Very well, sir. I think I will go now. I'll return to my work. Our family's coat of arms. It has been symbolizing our noble rights since the Middle Ages. Mordred Gordon, the heartless ruler of the Dark Ages of our history. His rule was ended by his own brother Marcus in 1213. William would often sit here, reading the paper. That was a very long time ago, though. The fire has to be maintained in winter as well as summer. Otherwise, it's very cold in here. The entire outer rim is full of old symbols and signs. No one understands what they mean these days. Doctor, can I have a word with you? Yes, all right. It's William. I know you were his friend, and also his physician. Yes, that applies to your whole family. So, what is it that troubles you, Gordon? You do realize that this is not the appropriate time to speak about William. I don't believe it was an accident. Hmm. Well, it is strange indeed. Then why would he do it? And 
Those burns. What burns? Numerous, deeply burned areas. I have no clue as to their origin. Go on. No, Mr. Gordon. Come back tomorrow. I will gladly tell you everything. I really do not want to talk about this today. All right. Then expect me tomorrow. I will certainly come back. Dr. Herman knows something important. I have to talk to him tomorrow. This bookcase is full of old dust-covered books. I don't think I could find one that would interest me. Old books and scrolls. They probably fell off the pile on the chair. Jeremy Gordon, William's father. The map of our manor. It might come in handy. I'll take it. It's full of various parchments and old scrolls. I can't see any interesting ones. A manually drawn map of the world from the 16th century. It seems like something's missing here. The statue is holding something strange in its hand. It appears to be a key of some sort, or an amulet. There's no point in skimming through these books. Not one of them can help me find out what happened. Just more books. William's work table. He used to spend hours and hours at it, writing. The Chronicle of the Warm Hill Manor. The local parish has been here for a very, very long time. According to the oldest books and records, it has been here for so long that only the walls of our castle may remember its foundation. Marcus Gordon had the church built so long ago that the date has already been lost in the mists of time. Therefore, the actual age of the building can only be estimated. As in the past, there was no accurate record-keeping. Should we hold to the views of respected historians, it was around 1215 AD that the church was built. It is thought that Marcus had the church built on pagan lands where many innocent people died through the ages. There is no corresponding record to this, however. Not one mention in any books or volumes available to me at the manor or the vicarage. Therefore, from a historic standpoint, this is a mere assumption, or worse, one of the many fictitious legends circulating in these lands. One thing, however, is more certain. It was this age that also gave rise to the academy at Black Mirror. As with Warm Hill Church, it was Marcus who was responsible for the construction of such a significant building. The new academy with its vast library was supposed to serve as a knowledge base for all the people. It was also a safe place for depositing the chronicle of the Gordon family that Marcus ordered his wise men to protect. In this, however, fate was not kind to Marcus. The whole academy burnt to stone long after his death, around 1512 AD. Despite the vigorous effort of the people at the manor, who hurried to the disaster to fight the flames, the academy burned to the ground. 
When they saw there was no chance to save the building, they tried to save the records from inside. Not everyone was willing to risk their life in lethal heat for the scraps of paper that had been scribbled over. If it hadn't been for a few brave souls, however, we would have never known who Marcus Gordon was, nor some of the history of Black Mirror Manor, as most chronicles were lost to the flames. Gar Moore Gordon perished in the fire at the age of 45. For his bravery, eternal memory is held. There was no one left of the Academy to care for the remaining records and old books. Consequently, the volumes that remained were passed on to the Warm Hill Parish to the safekeeping of Father Matthias. Father Matthias took meticulous care of the historical treasure until his death in 1543. To that holy man, the people of Garmore Gordon are grateful for the preservation of the Chronicle and the old records. Since those times, the Gordon family chronicle has been handed over from one successor of Father Matthias to the next, until today. Recorded by hand of Jeremy Gordon, 1632 A.D.